Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review, we are looking at the new Mafex X-Men Cyclops, part of their Marvel six inch line of figures, which everybody was super excited about. And then they released Wolverine and there were still people who enjoyed that figure and that's perfectly fine. But eh, most people realized it was kind of a giant turd dumpster fire piece of garbage. And it was kind of disappointing for that reason, given the price point and the expected quality and whatnot. And so, many people, like myself, were wondering, will this be a trend or will Cyclops be a lot better? He looked good at the conventions that they showed him at. In his promo images, he looked pretty solid, looked better than Wolverine in that he didn't have inherent flaws necessarily. Things like that gave people a lot of hope myself included. I'm a big X-Men fan. I want nothing more than for this line to be successful. However, it seems that Mafex, they have other plans. This Cyclops figure is in some ways better than Wolverine, but in other ways, a bigger steaming pile of hot dumpster fire, garbage, turd, poop, crap. So we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about 16 and a half centimeters to the very top of his hair, which makes him pretty close to, let's say, six and three eighths inches. And the reason I'm going to the very top of his hair is because of the shape of his head and the way they sculpted his hair. That is actually where the top of his cranium would be. And he's got a really goofy head. We'll get to that in a minute. But that's his size. And I know what you're thinking. What does he look like next to a Marvel Legends figure? And we're going to be doing this comparison a few times in this review, not because they're at the same price point or should be rightfully compared, but because they are the two versions of this figure which are most predominant. We're not going to look at the Mezco one. It doesn't look anything like this figure and it's not really even remotely comparable. So here's the Marvel Legends one, the base release. This one would be more accurate if it didn't have the jacket. As you can see, the color scheme matches. But we're just going to use this one because it's essentially the same figure. Same character design and everything. So size-wise, they are almost identical. You can notice, though, the proportioning is significantly different across the two figures. We'll get into that in a little bit. You're probably wondering if I'm holding the figure at a funny angle to give him these weird proportions. No, it is not an optical illusion from the angle of the camera being relative to the figure. It is just the way they sculpted him. He does have really long arms relative to his upper body. His upper body is very short compared to his lower body. He is very strange looking indeed. He does have very little neck and no traps and a big weird head. Those are all things you're seeing that are actually on the figure. It is not an optical illusion. Sure, at some angles you can kind of hide those things, but he does have those issues. Now one thing to note that's gonna throw off this figure more than anything, I think, is the length of the upper torso. He has long legs, considerably long legs, for the rest of his body. His upper torso is very short, and that's evidenced by the fact that the arms come all the way down to here. His fist hands are all the way down there. Look how high up his junk is relative to his wrist. Typically speaking, on your average superhero build, and I'll even post some images that give you a pretty good idea of this, you, the bottom of the superhero junk in the underwear like this should be in line with the thumb knuckle. Give or take a little bit, it should be close. You can see this is pretty close right there. You can see the thumb knuckle lines up with the bottom of the junk. On this guy, his arms are way too long, mostly because this whole part is scrunched down. How did that happen? That's a good question. I think I know what happened, and obviously this is just speculation, but that's what I'm here for. His proportions match that artwork, where he's walking hunched over, leaning forward. Look how long his arm is relative to his junk. Look how short his upper body appears because of his lean. It could just be coincidence. I tend to think not because the Wolverine figure that had very many issues, most of those issues lined up with one particular image they had on their box. Could be coincidence. I don't know. So we do have that initial issue with the proportionality. It's very weird. Very long legs, short upper body, long arms, short neck. Gives him a very kind of crunched up look at the top. I've heard some people say Jim Lee gave everybody short upper bodies and long legs. No, he didn't. He gave them big upper bodies and long legs. They weren't short and scrunchy like this. I'll post some images. Um, it's just not it's just not the case this is a very weird thing now to go in closer we're gonna just spend a lot of time on this because this is an 80 to 100 dollar figure it warrants the price or i mean it warrants the review the price warrants the review okay so let's go into the specifics let's look at the upper body first 
His musculature is weird. It is very flat front to back and stretched out really, really wide. His pecs are a very strange shape. They're not really shaped like pecs. It's a very odd look to have his upper body like this. The way they did his rib cage would be okay, except it's very wide at the rib cage compared to the underneath part, and then it just kind of sits on top. He's got kind of a snowman thing going on. That is wouldn't be a big deal on its own, but combine that with the fact that his proportions are so off, it's an issue. His arms are sculpted generally pretty well until you raise them out to the side. Then you have this weird macaroni shaped shoulder joint. Not great, that's not, not really ideal, especially considering the price point. He does have virtually no traps. I'm guessing they did that to account for the straps up here, but it gives him a very stubby neck look. From some angles it's fine, but it's something to notice. He also has a very boxy head, very weird kind of old man looking head, very thin looking hair. There's no volume to it, and Cyclops generally is drawn with a lot of hair on top of his head. His definitely looks a lot like old man hair. It's almost like they tried to mimic this sculpt, but then did a worse job. Cause this Marvel Legends head sculpt, and you guys know there's no love lost between me and Hasbro. I'm not a huge Marvel Legends fan, but when they do something well, we, we should note it. And this $20 figure has a significantly better head sculpt than this $82, $100 figure. So there's that. Um, moving down, uh, most of the sculpt work on the arms is okay. Most of the sculpt work on the legs, it's okay. Um, that's all fine, it's just really the proportionality, but let's talk about the paint. The entire thing is dark, slightly metallic blue with some shading on it, and it looks wonderful. I love it. If this figure was in dark blue and had the shading like the other Cyclops figure that, with the with this uh, cap on the head, it'd be perfect. This one has a, a really nice paint job, but look at his elbows. They're bright blue, they don't match at all. His knees, also bright blue, don't match at all. His head has two different shades of blue on it. Let me zoom in so you can see on the head. I don't know how well it's gonna show up, but the part on his jaw is dark blue and it connects up to the hair, and then behind that it's light blue. It's, it's very strange. So that consistency is definitely an issue. On Wolverine, we had significant problem with the yellow. This guy's is more consistent overall. There's no shading really in most of it. In some of it, there is some. You can see it in there a little bit on the wrists. But then if we look down here at the legs, we have a paint job that is not even close to acceptable for the price of this figure. It is terrible. It is as sloppy as you would expect a Marvel Legends figure to be, but they made separate pieces, so their paint job is clean because it's not even a paint job. This is unacceptable. This is bad. Top of the boots, not quite as bad, but still pretty darn sloppy and ugly. Not acceptable for the price point this figure sells at. There is some shading in the yellow, it's just very inconsistent. There's none up here, none up here. It's not great. So overall, the aesthetics on this figure are pretty terrible. Pretty terrible. There are individual parts that are okay, but overall, he's got terrible proportions. Um, you can even look, his legs are longer than this Hasbro figure's legs. If you look to the hip, the legs are taller on the on the uh, Mafex figure, and the rest is a lot shorter. It's a very weirdly proportioned figure. It's so strange. So strange. Okay, so aesthetics are, I'm gonna give him a four out of 10. He looks goofy as hell. Uh, and that gets worse as we go into the accessories. So let's go ahead and talk about the accessories. We have some different heads. We have the neutral head, which was already kind of like a grumpy old man look with thin hair. So let's go ahead and look at the, the grimacing head. This head is worse. He doesn't have any lips. He looks like Red Skull. Somebody shared this image with me and they're right. He looks like Red Skull, no lips at all. Looks bad. Is the optic blast effect thingy pretty cool looking? Yes, but also the visor on every one that I've seen images of, including my own, has a big line right in the middle. Well, not right in the middle, but right on it, which is very obvious and it looks like garbage. Shading in the hair looks nice, but we have two tones for blue again. The visor doesn't line up with the ear pieces of the visor. The ear pieces of the visor aren't the right color. They're almost green. Terrible, terrible quality overall for this head. But wait, there's more. We have an unmasked head, which just doesn't look like Cyclops at all. Again, we'll do a quick comparison to a comparable Hasbro head. The Hasbro one looks better. It has a better sculpt overall, as clean a paint job. It's, it's a significantly better looking head on a $20 figure as opposed to an $82, $100 figure. The Mafex one just does not look good. We do also have 
an interchangeable optic blast or visor piece. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we have one that goes around his neck to work with the unmasked head. With the interchangeable optic blast, I keep saying that, visor piece, we have optic blast, we have a little one and a big one. Those are both really nice. I like the sculpt, the paint is not great. We have some speckling on the white, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, shading paint with an airbrush type mechanic shouldn't be that hard for a company like this, but it was, so that kind of blows. And then we have some interchangeable hands. We have the two fist hands to come out of the package, two double pointy finger hands for pointing and or using his visor, and then two kind of relaxed style pose hands. They all have some shading on them that looks pretty nice. And then we have a display stand. That's it. For an $80 to $100 figure, this thing has not a lot in the box. There's not a lot in the box. The figure has significant issues so far. I'm not real pleased. I don't think you guys would be either, but let's go ahead and rate the accessories because the alternate heads look terrible, because the optic blasts have bad paint jobs on them, and because the visors don't fit the head properly and don't match the ear things, I'm gonna give the accessories only a five out of 10. Unacceptable at this price point. Not even close. All right, now it's time for the articulation. The head is on a ball, double ball peg on top of the neck. It barely fits on though, it doesn't peg on very well at all. And this thing is super stiff and it has virtually no range. It has almost no range and it's a bent double ball peg which is totally unnecessary. So you have very limited range on there and posing it is virtually impossible other than rotation. But even then, all of the articulation happens in the neck because of how stiff and immobile that double ball peg is. So luckily the neck has a really nice single ball peg and that's good. But you're not gonna get to use that double ball peg because it was very poorly implemented. For the shoulders, we do have a floating butterfly joint similar to the way Storm does their figures or eh, a lot of figures are doing it nowadays, but we have just a cap here and then we can move forward and back and it works pretty well. It, it, it's fine, that, that's okay. And then you have the ball peg here so you can get full range, but the arm is floppy. I don't know if you saw that, it did fall down a second ago. Sometimes it catches, sometimes it doesn't and it just wants to flop, so. It's not a great joint. You see how it's kind of not staying in place? Yeah, it's not a good joint there. You have your bicep swivel, that is fine. Double jointed elbow works really nicely. It's not bad looking at all if it wasn't for the mismatched color. And then the wrists have a ball hinge, which actually it's fine. I have no issue with that ball hinge. Hands come off a little bit too easily. That's not a huge deal. A lot of the little issues would easily be overlooked if it wasn't for the glaring issues that the figure has. Uh, so the harness is a floating piece that's fairly flexible. It sits on top of the belt though, or on top of the underwear. So anytime you move the figure, you end up with gapping. You can kind of finagle it and force it back down, but it's, it's gonna be something you have to be aware of and limited range would be um, the best course for that. If you try to do anything crazy, you're gonna end up with a big gap there and he's gonna have a belly shirt type thing going on. But we do have at least a single, it feels like a double, but I can't say for sure, for the upper torso and it has decent range. Forward and back is good, side to side is good. Rotation is fine. For the bottom peg, it's a single ball peg, and it does move around pretty well, but again, we have the issue with this lifting up. Uh, they should have had this part extended and tucked in behind it so that this stayed in place and this moved, but doing it like that kind of sucks. And you're not going to be able to have poses and fix that, so that really blows. For the hips, we have our, our ball pegs in here, hinged ball pegs. So you can bring the legs down a little bit and it's gonna look ridiculous. He's gonna look like a frog trying to stand on two feet uh, cause they just pinch down. But they're also incredibly floppy. Like, like just floppy. There's no, there's no friction. There's no resistance in there at all. They're not floppy forward and back luckily, but side to side, they are just pure shit. They're not useful at all. You can, if you wedge them all the way up, they don't flop cause they have nowhere to go but then you can't use the joints. So that is just, it's garbage. Especially, that's garbage at any price point, but that is especially at this price point, really garbage. They have decent range technically, but that's not useful if you can't use the legs. They have a little bit of a thigh swivel up there. That's okay. Double jointed knee works fine. It would be okay if it wasn't for the ugly paint and the wrong color. The ankles, also very loose joints. Very, very soft right here. Decent enough range, it's a ball hinge, that's awesome. You get a really nice ankle rocker out of that swivel. Uh, toe hinge is too far back on the foot. It's very poorly, let me zoom in on this just to show you how poorly they designed this. There's a big old lump right there. How do you do that? Like, somebody had to design it that way, and they did, and they left it that way. So the toe hinge is even worse on this figure than most figures. So ultimately, we have a few points of articulation on the Skywitcher nice, particularly the abdomen, that works really well. 
um, short of this part. Elbows and knees function pretty well, that's okay. Half the neck is okay. Hips are ridiculous, ankles are soft. It's just all around not a good figure. For the articulation, I'm gonna give it only a six out of 10. I mean, it, it the articulation in this guy is on par with like the SAS figures I've been reviewing recently, which are 10 years old. Um, it, this figure is nowhere near worth what it's costing, what it's, what it's being uh, marked as. Um, whether it's $80 imported, $100 domestic, it averages out to about the same after shipping costs because you shouldn't use sell shipping. So whatever, even if it's only 80 bucks, nowhere near worth it, guys. You know I'm not a huge Marvel Legends fan. I collect them, but I've never been shy <laughs> when telling them when they're not good. And for $20 or whatever even is the aftermarket price of this guy, there's no comparison. The Hasbro one is by far a better value. It's not even close. If they release this one without the jacket, I can't imagine anybody going for this over this. The accessories are nice-ish compared to not having any for this guy, assuming they wouldn't. But the, the maybe nicer paint job does not make this one better than this one. Overall, I'm saying this from like a personal perspective. If you had to pick one, assuming they release one that matches color-wise, there's no way this guy's even close to worth it. It is just as bad as Wolverine in so many ways. I mean, it's not terribly bad. He doesn't have the wrong colors on him in spots and stupidly long claws. Like, there's not inherent problems like that with the character. But as far as execution goes, this thing is bad in almost every way. It's really bad, and I can't wait to hear all of the negative complaints in the comment section saying how good it is because people need to justify their highly... Um, <laughs> poorly advised, let's say, poorly advised purchasing decisions. Um, but for those of you who haven't made the decision yet, please, 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 for your own sake, I get nothing out of this. I want to be clear, it doesn't do me any good to tell you that this is bad. All it means is I'm going to get people mad at me and I'm never going to get a review sample from this company. It doesn't benefit me to tell you figures are bad. It's just what I do because that's what a reviewer is supposed to do when a figure is bad, and that's what this is. It is a bad figure, especially given the price point. Not only because that. On its own merits, this figure, given the quality issues and the sculpt issues and the proportion issues, maybe 30 bucks would make me feel okay owning it, but at 80 to 100, not even close. Not even close. I'm pretty sure I paid around 95 bucks after shipping, even though I imported it. So it's right around what you guys will be paying if you get it domestically. Not even remotely close to worth it. I'm gonna give this guy, including the price point and all of the problems, maybe a four. I, I wanna go five, because it can be made to look okay, but no lips, weird proportions, terrible paint jobs, Bad articulation. Nah. Uh, four or five out of ten. You can pick, but that should be... I mean, a four or five out of ten on a hundred dollar figure. Why even buy it? That's my opinion. And now you know. So let me let, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And, uh, and we'll talk down there. Please keep it respectful, though. <laughs> no matter what side of the, of the coin you're on, please keep it respectful. I don't want to have to delete comments. But I will, so don't be a turd like this. Anyway, that'll do it guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to because I have lots of videos like this already on the channel and new ones coming out just about every single day. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.